Venom issue 30 finds Codex viewing Scorpion's attack on the Venom core, watching as Gargan's symbiote is destroyed by something, disconnecting him abruptly. The villain knows that it's impossible that the symbiote could have been killed as Otto comes to see him. Codex demands to know what the villain wants and what could possibly be more important than this. So Otto reveals that he has discovered interdimensional travel thanks to Gargan's virus suit. Finding the armor came with a standard environmental scanner and he was able to learn how the villain traveled to this world, having built some sort of gate and now thanks to the scanner, he has the plans for the gate. Otto confirms he can build the gate for Codex and it will allow him to access other worlds. Codex tells him to get to work as in Reed Richards' underground lab, Mac has built an exosuit so he can walk, as the crazed Reed tells the Gallard heroes that Mac's suit was an old war machine armor, and with it came a scanner which would automatically scan the environment around the armor, and if he can get his hands on the armor, he'll be able to build the interdimensional gate that they came through. Eddie asks how long it would take him to build the gate, learning from the crazy man about five years without the plans. Eddie knows that, that that won't work, knowing that he and Dylan would have to go and live somewhere else, but Dylan is confused as to why they couldn't stay with Annie. Annie quickly ends the meeting, telling everyone to get some rest before they come up with a plan to get the armor and take down her son. Later on, Annie is surprised to find Dylan has come to see her, knowing, like the woman, he can't sleep either. Either. Dylan touches Annie, which shocks the woman since her symbiote didn't burn up and die, wondering how that is. Dylan hugs her, saying that he isn't the Dylan from her world and he's not part of the hive and neither is Eddie, and since his father's symbiote isn't hurt by him, he figured she wouldn't be either. He knows this is weird for her to be around him, but she needs to know he lost her when he was a baby and at the least she has the memories of her son, whereas he doesn't have anything of Annie. Hugging Annie again, Dylan says, that at the end of the five years he doesn't want to leave, but he really hopes Annie will let him stay. Later, Annie goes and wakes Eddie, telling him it's time to go to work. Codex Mimol finds that Otto has found the files within Virus's armor that focus on Venom, the other world's version of Codex's father. Codex notes how the other world seems to have a closer connection to the voice that calls him, almost like on their world, the king in black is coming. Suddenly, their base is breached, causing alarms to sound as Venom arrives, smashing the fantastic car into the lab and destroying it. The Venom Corps assault the base, spreading out to battle Codex and his men as Mac heads in to find his armor. Venom confronts Codex, who finds the symbiote won't obey him. Codex knows that this is Eddie, attacking his father in a rage and calling him pathetic. Venom snatches the villain's mask off his face, as the symbiote Avengers arrive and attack the Venom Corps, while Annie joins Eddie, attacking Dylan and allowing Venom to grab the villain, telling him how much he reminds him too much of his own boy and how he failed him. Eddie removes his symbiote, saying that he is every nightmare he has ever had about Dylan, meaning he won't fight the villain, but his symbiote will. Venom begins bonding with Codex, taking over the boy's body and telling him that they don't want to hurt him, as Eddie is attacked from behind by Mac, who has found his virus armor. Eddie tells Gargan that they had a deal, but the villain isn't interested in the deal, knowing that he was always going to be put in prison at the end of this, and why would Brock ever think he would be able to trust him? Virus flies at the hero but suddenly is blasted to pieces by Reed Richards, who says no matter in what universe, he knows exactly how to shut down the Mark III war machine armor, thanks to Tony Stark being a friend of his. Annie retrieves the younger Dylan, bringing him to Eddie and Codex, who while under the control of Venom, is forced to touch the younger Dylan. Doing so gives Codex the life he never had, bonding his own memories with that of Dylan's and allowing the angry man to remember living a loving and fulfilled life with both his parents. Codex falls unconscious and all over the world, the symbiotes die off, freeing everyone from their control. Codex reverts back to Dylan, who says that his mother was supposed to bring home dinner as he dies in her arms. Having defeated Otto, Reed gathers the plans for the gates, meaning he can finish them quicker now, only to return to find Annie has lost her son a second and final time. One year later, Annie, Eddie, and Dylan walk through the park as Eddie learns that Annie's Dylan actually survived, but he's in 
a coma since the damage done to him while he was Codex will take years to recover from. But her son is now back and that's all that matters to the woman. Eddie is glad and happy that Mac Gargan is also behind bars, knowing that this world will take care of him. Annie hopes that Mac will finally see the light and help them return the world to some form of normalcy. Eddie is also glad that he got his new organic hand, although he's going to miss his symbiote one, but it feels good to be whole again. Annie knows he's not just talking about the arm, as Eddie tells her that the last year with her and Dylan has been great and they should just live in the moment. A few months later, Reed manages to finish the gate, although being insane he cannot guarantee that it will work. Eddie and Dylan get ready to leave, sharing a moment with Annie, who tells Eddie that she cannot go since she needs to be there with Dylan and Eddie has his own messes to clean up on his world. She remembers when Eddie called her his wife when Scorpion attacked her and she really liked that. Annie talks with Dylan, telling him that if he hears voices calling him away, he needs to remember that he is her son and not to follow them. Dylan promises to as Eddie and the boy head through the gate, bidding Annie and the other world farewell. Arriving back on Prime Earth, Eddie and Dylan head outside, but Dylan doesn't know if they are home, but Eddie knows they are. However, they find the entire world shrouded in darkness, wondering where all of the stars have gone. Venom issue 30 ended the big Venom Beyond storyline in an action-packed emotional finale that gave Eddie and Dylan some much needed closure on certain pains in their life. I enjoyed Kate's changing things up and actually giving the world a somewhat happy ending, letting the villain Codex live and revert back to being Dylan and freeing the Earth from the symbiotes. I was sure given how dark the series had gotten up until now, we would have an ending that saw Eddie maybe forced to kill Codex and in turn that turns Annie and everyone on that Earth against him, ruining his chance for a new life with his former wife. I did love them getting to spend a year on this new world and being that we didn't actually see it, I could easily see a mini series set during that time, detailing how Eddie got his new hand and just how the world reacted to being freed from the symbiotes and just his family life with Annie and Dylan could be a really great premise for a book. I'm excited for the immediate future of the book now that we're in the King in Black territory and what this huge event will bring to Venom and Dylan and all of his side characters. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.